several years ago I started to study the Constitution really for maybe the first time in my life and I found that the amount of knowledge that I had about the Constitution or lack thereof was honestly embarrassing. So I started to study about the men's lives who were behind the Constitution and the men who drove them. And I found out about the Black Robe Regiment who was actually never a unit, who was actually never a group of men who had any single insignia. They didn't have a single creed, but they stood behind. They were pastors. And the name actually came from the British who were those pesky men in black robes. They were the pastors who were the leaders of the communities. They stood up for right and they stood up for God. And as you study their teachings and their sermons and the way that they did things, you start to find this phrase, disobedience to tyrants is obedience to God. So not until recently did I find out what that even really meant um, in a biblical context. I had, no, I had no context to it. I just, I knew that this was ringing over and over. So I started to look into the Black Robe Regiment and I found Jonas Clark. Most have never heard his name. Those who do, who had, don't know his position. Jonas Clark was a pastor, he was a reverend in Lexington, Massachusetts. The Sons of Liberty would actually come and meet at his house and at his church because there was no safe space for them in Boston. The Sons of Liberty were John Hancock and Samuel Adams and John Adams. Um, many, many others. I could go through and name them, but you can research them. But something that stood out to me was a quote from a pastor the year he died, Reverend William Ware, wrote in 1850 in the annals of the American pulpit, it would not be beyond truth to assert that there was no person at that time in that vicinity, not only no clergy, but no other person of whatever calling or profession who took a firmer stand for the liberties of the country or was more ready to perform the duties and endure the sacrifices of a patriot than the minister of Lexington. He went on to say, when the struggle actually commenced, the people were ready for it, thoroughly acquainted with the reasons on which the duty of resistance was founded and prepared to discharge the duty at every hazard. No population within the compass of the colonies were better prepared for the events of the 19th of April. No people better prepared than that of the people of Lexington. No people to whom the events of that day could more safely have been entrusted, none more worthy of the duties that fell to their lot, or who better deserved the honors which have followed the faithful performance of them. No single individual probably did so much to educate the people up to that point of intelligence, firmness, and courage as their honored and beloved pastor. Paul Revere was going from house to house to let every individual patriot and group of patriots know that the British were indeed coming. They were moving to Lexington, Massachusetts. Their intent was to destroy the cache of arms that they had. When Paul Revere made it to the house of Reverend Jonas Clark, Samuel Adams and John Hancock were in the house. He successfully conveyed the message. Reverend Jonas Clark called on his dear friend, Deacon Parker. The deacon went to the church and rang the church bell and mustered the Minutemen and militiamen in the town. They stood that day, the next day, against the British on April 19th. Eight men died and many were wounded. And it says that they literally laid under the windows of the church as Reverend Jonas Clark went back. His men were prepared. His men were ready to give their life to a cause that they believed was not only a good cause, but a righteous cause. The term that came back was disobedience to tyrants is obedience to God. And I never knew this until a few days ago, and I, I've looked it up and the best I can understand this is true. I heard a rabbi that described in Egypt when the Israelites were captive. One of the last plagues and one of the last things that Moses had to do for the people was to give a message to the Pharaoh 
that God was going to send his angel and to kill everyone who had a firstborn son, kill their firstborn son, if they did not put blood on the doorposts and the headposts of the door. But the blood had to be the blood of a lamb. In the Christian world, we understand that that blood represents the blood sacrifice of Christ. The rabbi went a step further in something I didn't know. In that day, it was actually illegal to kill a lamb in Egypt. So not only was this statement a statement about me fearing God, and I'm going to protect my family, and I'm going to do what God has asked me to do, but it was also a political statement. The Jews had to kill a lamb, and it was illegal to kill a lamb in Egypt, and not only did they have to kill it and eat it, they had to put its blood on the door of their house. Imagine today, if it were illegal to fly the Gadsden flag, the yellow flag with the snake on it that says, don't tread on me. Imagine it's illegal to fly that flag and now you're going to put that flag in your front of your house because God told you to. And if you don't, your firstborn son dies. If you do, your whole family could die. The Jews believed that disobedience to tyrants was obedience to God. They put the blood on the doorposts and the head of their door to signify that they were not only standing with God, they were directly and intentionally standing against a tyrant. It's time that we as Christians stand up for what is right. It's time we squared our shoulders back and we raised our swords to fight. For the Bible is our weapon and the Spirit is our shield. And the church needs more of its members to be workers in the field. It's one of my favorite old songs that I grew up singing. And I believe it's time today that we stand up, not apologizing for who we are, not making any inroads or not making any unneeded compromises. Stand on the Word of God. Don't be ashamed to stand on the Word of God. And study to show yourself a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the truth. This is Joel McCracken with Tactical Castle. I'll be having different pastors come in and speak and different business owners if I can and different leaders talk about what it means to defend the Constitution of today's world. Right now, we're no longer required to get arms and stand up on a front line and give our lives. But sometimes we have to give up our relationships, sometimes we have to give up our good name. Because many in our circles won't agree with or understand what we're saying. I'm doing that today. And I would ask you to join me to stand together, firm, on the Constitution of the United States of America and defend all liberties, defend all religions, and the right to practice and defend our families once again. Thank you.